For those young people on the call, Yellow Pages is this device we used to use to look up phone numbers. Count Distinct. This is the question that came in. Why is Count Distinct such a problem in SQL? It makes everything so slow. And this is true. I want to stress here that Distinct is hard. And, and if I gave you the Yellow Pages this weekend, uh, for, those who are, for those young people on the call, the Yellow Pages is this device we used to use to look up phone numbers. But if I gave you the Yellow Pages and said, you know, how many distinct suburbs are there in there? That's hard work. It's much harder than if I said how many pages are in there or how many rows are in the yellow pages, you simply count them. The distinct number of anything in a large data set is hard to do. But I have a brand new invention here to improve the way we do count distinct. Here's my employee table. The stop standard employee table, and I can obviously run a select count distinct department number, and there are three distinct department numbers. Let's be Oracle developers, not developers of Oracle, of, with Oracle software, developers of the Oracle software. Let's build how we would do distinct. So my first crack at doing a count distinct would be, well, I could sort the data. So I could effectively have them in department number order first. And then all I do is as I'm going through the data is I pluck off every time the department number changes. Now I could do that in code or I can do it just with an analytic function. I'll just use a lag function. And I can see that the first department 10 gets a one, department 20 gets a one, department 30 gets a one in that column called new val. And so if I want to do count distinct, I just have to count the new vowels, and I get three distincts. This isn't my invention, obviously. Oracle Database can do exactly this. And in fact, if we actually just do a explain plan on select count distinct department number from employee, guess what? Sort the data in a group by fashion, like we just did, and then work your way down and do the count. Our homegrown solution there is exactly what the old database kernel does as well. Can we do better? Because let's face it, the thing that sort of seems to be glossed, glossed over here is the fact that I, did just, I just did a big sort. That's fine to sort 14 rows in the employee table. What if I want to sort a million rows? Sorting is really expensive. So I came up with this brainwave. How about rather than sorting, I create a hash array. So I'll simply loot through every row in the employee table and I'll use this column of interest, the department number, as being an index into an array. So every time I hit department 10, I'm simply doing hash bucket 10 equals yes. And I'll do hash bucket 20 and hash bucket 30 equals y for those three department numbers. But it's a nice spice array. And at the end of it, I simply have the number of entries in that hash bucket array is my distinct count. If I wrote it from first principles, distinct equals three, I get the right result. And that works sweet as well. And I'm super impressed with myself for the fact that I've invented this brand new technology until I actually run select count distinct again on Oracle with a more modern version. And guess what? That's exactly what we do. We simply do a hash group by as opposed to a sort group by. So someone in Oracle had this brainwave many, many years before I did. And in fact, the reason it's hash group by is when we do count distinct in Oracle, what we do is we actually can rewrite the query like this. We can say select department number from group by department number. That's effectively like distinct department and then do a count of the result. That's why we actually says hash group by because under the covers we've rewritten a distinct to look like a group by and we can actually see hash group by on this view followed by a count aggregate the sort. Let's look at a slightly bigger example now rather than just the employee table I'm looking at DBA objects which has lots and lots of rows but just for the four owners because those examples so far were just count distincts with no partitioning of data. What if I want to do a group by owner? So I want a count distinctive object ID now for each different owner. Well, we actually still have this nice optimization. We have a hash group by inside of view and then a second hash group by. All the distincts have been removed. They've been converted to group by so we can use this hashing function. What's going on behind the scenes is we're actually rewriting the query like this. I need owner and distinct object IDs within owner, so I can do a first group by by both of them. That gives me about 50,000 rows. And then I do a count or object ID based on the owner. So that gives me the distinct object IDs, the inner query, and then I do a group by get it by owner. And you can see I get hash group by for the object IDs, hash group by for each of the owners, and the result comes out as one would expect.
So this is pretty cool, but obviously my great hashing bucket invention has been shot to pieces. But what if I have two sets of distincts? This one's owner, I want distinct object ID, but I also want count distinct of another column. Well, that's gonna make a mess of my group by here. And it does. Once I have more than one count distinct, I have to fall back to the sorting operation. That's what we have to do. And in fact, even if I don't have owner in there, even if it's just a straight count distinct across the entire table, the moment I have two of them, I'm up to sort group by. So I have this issue. That's a bit of a problem. So maybe here, the great Connor McDonald invention, maybe here's my chance to build something new inside the Oracle kernel. So I thought, can I fix this without using a big sort? So to do it, I'm gonna start with a nice small example. I've got a table called T1, it's only got 30 rows and just some random values between one and 60 for two columns. And I'll run some queries, it's got 30 rows in it. There are 23 distinct values for Q1 and 22 distinct values for Q2, just using DBMS random. I wanna be able to get that without doing a sort. So here's my theory. I can build up hash arrays for each different column. So here's my values from zero up to 60. I've marked them out from zero to 10. And so the first row is 14 for Q1 and 13 for Q2. So I'll simply put them in my little hash bucket in position 14 and 13. This will just be a string. And then when I get 28 and 57 for the second row, I'll put them into my string as well. And so on and so on as I keep building rows. I'll read each row from the table and simply plug the bucket, plug the holes in, this, in these little hash arrays for each of these. That's my theory here. I can extend my hash bucket to be multiple columns. So this is what I've done. I've done it with strings rather than arrays just to keep my logic nice and simple. I have these arrays that go out to 64. They're my numbers one to 60 inside my table here. So for each row in T1, if I get a value of 14, I'll simply put a one in position 14 and leave the zeros in position 13. Position one becomes a 14 and the rest becomes zero still. I do that for column Q1, I do it for column Q2. And at the end of it, my hash bucket should reflect the distinct values. So I spit out some output and you can see, this is what I built. There was a value of one, position one in column Q1. There was a value of three, a value of four, a value of six and so on. And same for Q2. And then all I've done is simply counted all the ones inside each of these values. And I got the right answer. There were 23 distinct values for Q1 and 22 for Q2. That's pretty cool. I've built a count distinct using hashing with no sorting. Of course, my, my solution only scales to numbers up to 64. The moment I get a number over 64, I'm in big trouble. And obviously I could make my strings, what, up to 32K? But then I get a number at 100,000, I'm gonna break here. So I need to do something a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna do some bigger random numbers now. You can see that I've got numbers up to 17,000 and 28,000. Can I solve this problem still limiting myself to a hash bucket size of only 64 bytes. Well, I can, but I need to have multiple hash buckets. So now I have an array of hash buckets. And so what I do now is this becomes a lot of a bigger set of code. And what I'm doing now is I'm just doing this for column Q1. Bucket number four is all the numbers from four times 64 to five times 64. Bucket number 14 is all the rows from bucket 14 times 64 to 15. So this will be, let's say that's 20 long, that's what, that's the value of 200, for example. This will be the value of, I don't know, 904, I'm making this up. But we have lots of different buckets. Now we need to add up all the bits in all of the buckets to come up with a number distinct of 37, which is actually the correct answer. And I could actually write more code to make it for Q1 and Q2. I'm very, very impressed with myself here. I've written a hash bucket function that scales well, no sorting, and I get the right answer. I'm very, very impressed with myself until I realized that in 19C, someone invented this anyway. And these are some new functions in 19C that you can use. And they literally do exactly what I've sort of just explained there from first principles. I need a bucket number to manage large numbers, and I wanna construct a list of bits for distinct values in a particular column. And it gives me roughly what we saw before in our strings. Bucket number one has this now sort of bit operation. It's actually a blob. And so if I want to effectively work out the distinct values, I take my buckets, I take my bit strings, I replace all the bit strings with ones to count them up, and I'm done. 
So the same logic we did with strings is now available natively with bits in 19C, and I get the right answer. At the moment, you can write your own functions like this. You get count distinct with no sorting, and you're using these new functions in 19C. If I need it for both Q1 and Q2, I get the bucket for Q1 and Q2, I construct this bitmap for Q1 and Q2, and then I roll up and count the bits just like we did with our strings, and we get 37 and 34, which is the right answer. As we can see, actually I haven't got an idea, it's all been invented already and implemented now in 19C. And one of the cool things is these new functions in 19C are specifically designed for materialized view rewrite. If you have materialized views that use those new bitmap functions, those bit counting functions, someone can write a standard count distinct query and we will automatically rewrite to use your materialized view to get the benefit of these new bitmap operations which no longer need to do massive sorts. So count distinct is a problem that is coming closer to being solved with 19C. Thank you.